Hi Poker fans, Harry here, and with the Indigo Disc recently released, I thought now would be a good time to go over the second episode of the Pokemon Horizons anime. The episode, The Pendant That Starts It All, Part 2. And this episode was, well, really good. It raised a lot of questions, but also I think it was a really strong start for Liku's debut in the Pokemon anime. Now I already did a breakdown of the first episode of Pokemon Horizons The Pendant That Starts It All Part 1 and I will link that up in the cards above so check that out if you haven't already. But with all of that out of the way let's get in to the video but before we do don't forget to subscribe also leave a like and comment down below and let's get in to the video. So after a preview of the previous episode of course the pendant that starts at all part one. And after that preview, the title card is shown. And unlike the previous episode, the pendant that starts at all part one, where the title was just overlaid on the episode, we actually get a title card in this episode. And the title card shows the three Paldean starter Pokemon outside some building, which we later learn is the Rising Vault Tackler's ship, specifically the entrance to it inside, and um, it is high up in this in this title card screen, is high up amongst the clouds, um, with the three Paldean starters just, well, chilling together. And of course, moving into the actual episode, it starts how the last one ended, with a force field protecting Liko and Sprigatito from Sarah Ledger's Psycho Cut, um, as well as suspending them in the air. And in this force field is a Pokemon. And the original day that this episode aired in Japan, this Pokemon had never been seen before. It was like um, Zoroark in Zoroark Master of Illusions. It was like ho um, in the first episode of the Pokemon anime, Pokemon I Choose You. Um, it was a Pokemon that just had never been seen before for, well, maybe a future region. It's unclear whether Terrapagos, who we know is the Pokemon now, is part of Gen 9 or is going to be part, the start of um, Generation 10 is. Unsure at this point. But... This is insane that before that, this Pokemon had never been seen before. Um, so, and of course this, as I said, there are many Pokemon that have been seen before. But I think this marks the first time in the main anime that they have introduced a previously unknown Pokemon since Togepi's appearance in Who Gets to Keep Togepi. Um, so... That has been a long while ago. That was back in, well, the Indigo League. So that was, well, near the start of Ash's adventure, which is insane. But of course, we now know that the Pokemon in the Force Field is called Terrapagos. And it is a legendary Pokemon that, of course, has now been seen in the Indigo Desk. It is the main part of that story, the Indigo Disc, which is part of the um, hidden treasure of Area Zero, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. And it's the main Pokemon there. And how it is seen in this, in the anime, is very, well, it, it's based, or I suppose actually the Indigo Disc, um, when they find Terrapagos um, in the DLC, it is based off Liku's Pendant, because they are both small stones, that hide Terrapagos in its crystal form before, of course, it emerges in this episode to save Liko and Sprigatito. However, when Terrapagos opens its eyes and it sees Liko and Sprigatito, it quickly disappears, and this causes the force field to also disappear as well, which means Liko and Sprigatito fall. However, just like they did in the previous episode, um, Freddy and his Charizard have managed to break away from their battle against um, Amifo, that started of course in the previous episode, and they save Liko and Sprigatito from falling, and they manage to escape from the explorers um, by flying away on Charizard. However, this scene has brought up a lot of questions, 
And unfortunately, we aren't going to get them from Freddy because, well, first of all, we start with a flight um, f to the rising vault tackler ship. They are flying through the sky and Sprigocito actually points out to Liku the full moon, which could be a reference to how, sh uh, how well, to how Liku looked at the moon when she and Sprigatito used to sneak out of the academy to train, as we saw in the previous episode. And she reaches out for the moon just like she did in the previous episode. Um, and it's just good mirroring to see that she's still progressed as a trainer even in a short amount of time. But unfortunately, the explorers have flying Pokemon too, and they manage to catch up with Liko and the rising Vault Tacklers. And even worse is that the explorers manage to capture Liko and her pendant. And this is well, insanely bad because, I mean, the um, explorers are major antagonists of, well, Pokemon Horizons. And if they are anything like Team Rocket were in the games, then the explorers are bad news. However, Liku is trying to reassure herself that everything is fine, which may be a reference to, like, the this is fine meme where everything is burning around and, is, like, this is fine. But... Fortunately, Freddy and Charizard arrive just in the nick of time, and actually Freddy and Amifo pick up where their battle left off from the previous episode. Well, actually from earlier this episode as well, that carried over from the previous episode. However, this time the battle is a, di a bit different, because Freddy, since he's back at the Rising Vault Tackler ship, that's where um, the explorers have captured Liku, because none of the other Rising Vault Tacklers were there to, well, stop Liku from being kidnapped. Um, and Freddy just wasn't there either. He uses his Captain Pikachu to battle against Amifo's Seraledge. Yes, he still uses his Seraledge. However, the battle is cut short again, um, just like the battle between Charizard and Sarah Ledge. And this battle ends with a clash between Pikachu's Volt Tackle and Sarah Ledge's Psycho Cut again. And of course, the Rising Volt Tacklers get part of their name from the move Volt Tackle. And with Pikachu being the captain of, like, the ship of the Rising Volt Tacklers, you can see why they were called the Rising Volt Tacklers. And even though... Both Pokemon are still standing. Luko stops the battle because she doesn't want anyone else getting hurt, which is one of the reasons why the explorers were so easily able to capture her um, just a couple minutes ago because she didn't want any people or Pokemon getting hurt. However, we're then shown how far Liko and Sprigatito have grown, grown closer together in such a short time. Because Sprigatito manages to break through to Liko that the explorers are the bad guys and, well, that she shouldn't just go with them so easily. Because whatever they want with her, well, whatever they want with her pendant is obviously for a bad reason. And through Liko realising that the explorers are the bad guys pulls off a massive leafage with Sprigatito against the Explorers. And this is actually the first time that they have been able to use this move, which is massive and just shows how far they have come from, well, their first meeting in the previous episode. And actually, this kind of mirrors Ash and Pikachu's relationship, because in the first episode, Ash and Pikachu did not get on at all. But when... Ash proved himself to Pikachu that he fully cared for Pikachu, they became the best of friends. And we can see this same thing happening with Liko and Sprigatito. But unfortunately, the rising Volt Tackler ship has entered a storm. Um, they entered a storm because they were hoping to shake off the explorers, but it has backfired massively. As we see Sprigatito fall off the ship and Amifo on his Corviknight catch Sprigatito and take it as a hostage. And as the explorers fly off with Sprigatito, Liko calls out, showing how much she really cares for her partner. And Tex shows up with, well, Tex saying, to be continued. 
So this is insane and crazy that Sprigger Cheetah has been taken by the Explorers. They are obviously not pulling any punches and it just shows how bad these Explorers are. So I thought this episode was amazing. It brought up a lot more questions than it answered. But um, in the same way, I think it was amazing. It growed the bond of um, Sprigger Tito and Liko. It growed the threat of Amifo and the Explorers. And it also introduced us to the Rising Vault Tacklers and gave us a bit more insight to Freddy, his Charizard, and his Captain Pikachu. But that is just my thoughts. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of this episode. Um, and also, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like. Also subscribe and share it out. I will see you in the next one.